So I'd like to give you an idea of what a weighted average means, because that's really how we calculate the average atomic mass. So I'm going to use an example that you might be a little bit more comfortable and familiar with. Let's say we want to average the ages of the students in one of my integrated science classes. I'm just going to make up some numbers to keep it kind of simple. But let's say if we count how many students are different ages, just for an example, let's say we have 10 students that are age 14. We have six students that are age 15 and four students that are age 16. This is pretty artificial, but it'll get my point across. So what we want to do to make it similar to how we calculate the atomic mass is to figure out what percent of the students are each age. So I'm going to make another column here for the percent. So if you look at the count, we have a total of 20 students. So if 10 out of the 20 are 14 years old, that means 50%. If 6 out of 20 students are 15, that's another 30%. And 4 of the 20, or 20%, are age 16. So it's important that we have the percentage numbers. Now, when you do this for the atoms, you're already going to have these percentage numbers. But I just want to kind of show you where these percentage numbers come from. So how do we calculate the average age? A naive approach would be to say, well, we have some 14s, some 15s, and some 16s. And so I could just add those together and divide by 3. Well, I'll tell you what you're going to get. You're going to get 15, which is the exact center of those three numbers. But that doesn't really represent it well, because notice a lot more of my students are 14 than are 15. And so to account for how many of each we have, this is why we call it a weighted average. So the process looks like this. I'm going to maybe call it a formula, although it's not a formula that you may have heard of before, like in math class, like the formula for the area of a rectangle is length times width, but it doesn't work quite that well for this. So I'm just going to show you what the process looks like. So maybe I will write it out. The average age, what we're going to do is we're going to take the percentage times the age for any one of them, and then we're going to add it to another percent for that age plus, and we can do this for as many different ages as we have. In my example here, we only have three, so it's going to look a lot like this. So for our particular set of numbers, it will be 50% times the age of 14, because that's the first um, li li in the list that I have. And then we have 30% times the age of 15. And then finally, 20% times the age of 16. Now, you could grab a calculator at this point, although there's, you know, some of these numbers are nice enough you could do it by hand. For example, 50% is another name for half. Half of 14 would be 7. 30% of 15, again, we're going back to some work you would have done probably in math class in middle school or before. 30% of 15 is 4.5. And 20%, which is another name for one-fifth, of 16 is 3.2. Again, any calculator will find these numbers for you. You may also, if you'd rather not work in percents, you can turn percents into decimals. So this would be the same as saying, I'm going to give you the option here, 0 0.50 times 14 plus 0 0.30 times 15 plus 0 0.20 times 16. Okay, so this would be a number. You wouldn't need to hit the percent sign on your calculator if you do it this way. You're still going to get these same three numbers. And so when we add those together, we get 14.7 for that average. So we could say the average age of the students in my class is 14.7.
Now that doesn't mean that any student in my class actually is 14.7, but it just accounts for how many in each age group that we have. Okay, so weighted averages are used all the time for different things. So now we'll look at how this is done for a particular element. So let's look at the next page. So back on the page with FET that you've been working on. So I'm going to go to neon. And I want to look at nature's mix. So if we were to find a bunch of different atoms of neon in nature, we just have this huge collection of them, maybe thousands and thousands. They might be represented by the dots that you have here. I don't know how many are there, but there's a lot. Some are neon 20, some are neon 21, and some are neon 22. So this chart right here, your percent composition chart, shows you the percent that's each. So we're going to use that to figure out what the average atomic mass is. Okay, so I'll be toggling back and forth um, between this page and the notes page. So first thing we want to see is that 90.48% is neon 20. 90.48%. Okay. So I'm just going to make a list here. 90.48% is neon 20. And we write the little mass number up here in the corner. And another 9.25% is neon 22. 9.25%. That's neon 22. And the remaining little bit, and it's not much that's left, is our neon 21. So that's 0.27%. 0.27%. Is neon 21. So now I'm going to build an equation for this, much like I did for the students in my class. So I'll write it in both forms again, depending on which calculator you like to use. So the average atomic mass, or yeah, for this would be 90.48% times, and then the mass of that. And this is neon 20, so the mass is 20. And then we add to that 9.25% times the mass of 22. And then we add 0.27% times 21. Make sure we don't get these numbers mixed up. Let's draw a little box around that. And so this is what we're going to punch into our calculator. Or if you'd like to change these percents into decimals, again, you don't have to do both of these. I bet your math teacher would want you to be able to know how to do this. This would be 0 0.9048, just moving the decimal place twice, times 20, plus 0 0.0925, when you move the decimal place twice on that one, and plus 0 0.00. 27 times 21. Okay, so we'll grab a calculator and see what those add up to. All right, so I got a calculator here. It really doesn't matter what type you use. Um, I'm going to use my decimal version for this. This doesn't have a convenient percent key, so I'm going to show you 0 0.9048 times 20 is the first thing I put in, plus 0 0.0925 times 22 plus 0 0.0027 times 21 and just hit equals and there's our average 20 point and I'm just going to round this 20.2 this is actually 20.1877 but if I just want one decimal place 20.2 now, if you grab a periodic table and look at it, you'll see it's very close to what the periodic table shows for the average atomic mass. They call it the atomic weight of, um, of neon. So here's this one here. Here's neon. 
atomic weight, they call it 20.1797. So they've got a few more decimal places here, but that rounds to 20.2 just the same way. Okay. All right, so that's all the demonstration that I'm going to do for you. So I'm going to have you take it from here and try some of these other ones. Um, and some of them are kind of routine and then might mix in some more challenging ones for you there to see how that goes. So hopefully this helps you make sense of what that average number is on the periodic table and why it doesn't belong to any one kind of atom. But because neon has three different isotopes, we have to average together the masses of all of them in the weighted kind of way that I show you here. So I hope that was helpful. Good luck. Keep going.